whole shtick that, that Charles, uh, and I don't mean that to minimize, you know, Charles and his position. This, this is a very real position within the Republican Party. You've got people like Mike Lee and Rand Paul who are, who are proud libertarians. There's a whole bunch of them within the Republican caucus at the federal level, at the state levels. Uh, you've got libertarian billionaires. One of them writes an op-ed for every week for the Washington Post. Uh, you've got, you know, and, and some of them are funding some of the largest think tanks in the country. You've got an entire libertarian think tank, the Cato Institute, that was originally the, called the Charles Koch Foundation. So you've got, I mean, this is not a completely fringe thing. And it really began being brought to us in 2024 by Ronald Reagan, by the Reagan administration or the Reagan revolution. Uh, you know, Louise and I, uh, last week, we spent uh, last week with our family uh, down in Mexico. And as we were driving back to the airport, uh, we passed through this massive slum and, uh, you know, a barrio bajo. And, uh, you know, the, the house, some of the houses were made out of scavenged cinder block and brick, uh, but most of them were, you know, scavenged wood and tarps and stuff like that. Um, the, the, the ditches with raw sewage uh, for streets, electricity hijacked from streetlights. I've seen this in countries all over the world. I did international relief work for years in the 1980s, and I've, I've you know, lived and worked in, in these kinds of places. And when I, when I got home and I was thinking back, well, actually, what, as, as we were driving through this, through this, uh, 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 this slum, uh, in Brazil they call them favelas, um, as we were driving through it, it suddenly struck me that in our climate, you couldn't just build a house out of cardboard, you know, scavenged cardboard and scavenged uh, wood. You'd have to have something a little more waterproof, like a tent. And then it suddenly hit me, oh my God, we've got tent cities right here in Portland. You, we've got tent cities all over America where people are living without running water, without access to sewage, without electricity. I mean, just like, the, just like these slums in these third world countries. America, as the result of 42 years of the Reagan revolution, embracing this kind of libertarian ideology that big government is a bad thing. Remember Ronald Reagan saying the most, nine most uh, frightening words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help? Well, here we are. Reagan, you know, uh, Reagan told us over and over and over again what he was going to do. He promised America that if we could just go along with his war on organized labor, that companies would no longer be burdened by having to work things out with union bosses. His new right to work for less was going to save our, our you know, going to make us all richer. Well, instead, uh, you know, as we cut union membership from a third of us down to 6% of us, it's wiped out the average household. Reagan promised us if we stopped enforcing antitrust laws like he did in 1983, the big companies would give us better prices and everything would be wonderful. Instead, they wiped out small and medium-sized companies and turned our small towns and our inner cities into ghost towns. Reagan promised us that if we just cut the tax burden on the richest Americans, on the morbidly rich, the, 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 the benefits would trickle down to the rest of us. <laughs> right, didn't, quite so ha didn't happen quite that way. He, he told us that we needed to get rid of oppressive regulations. Instead, our food supply is now filled with chemicals and microplastics and heavily processed phony foods. It goes on and on. I mean, you know, this is the world we want, really?